For this video, we're going to use the Thrips of California, which is a lucid key. And from the home page, we've clicked on Identify Thrips. And you'll see that we have a specimen that we want to identify using this key. And of course, the lucid key has features available or uh, morphological characters available to make choices and it's a uh, key that then you can you can choose those characters that you can see in order to identify that species and to illustrate what I'm talking about we it, it comes up when you hit identify thrips to begin by abdominal segment 10 we click on that, you'll see we have two choices, conical and female, longitudinally divided ventrally, or tubular in both sexes, not divided ventrally. And of course, this is a pretty easy one. I'll focus up and down a little bit. should always focus up and down with small insects using the microscope, so you get something like a 3 dimensional idea of what you're looking at. But this is an easy one and so it's quite obvious that we're dealing with a species that's conical in the female. I'm choosing that. When I do that, you can see that we have species remaining called entities remaining, 173, and in this lower right box we have entities discarded 69 and down in the lower left box it has features chosen and we've we've chosen one so far for this species I'll probably just go through and choose the best character but uh, so I'm clicking on that but if for some reason you can't make a decision on that character you could always go to the next best character but in this case, it's chosen metanodal median CD. So I'm going to move the specimen to the metanodal. And go to higher power.
And so here we have the metanotum. It's a little dark, but you can see the anterior edge of the metanotum here. This is the anterior edge. And these would be the median metanodal CD. And this is the anterior margin. So it's quite obvious that this is the character state to choose. So I'm going to click on arising at anterior margin. Now you'll see we have 57 species remaining. And we've discarded 185. Clicking now on the next best character body color. That's a pretty easy one. And uh, we have four choices there. We have almost uniformly brown. And I think you've seen enough already from this specimen to know that it's uniformly brown. Let me just say that I know what this species is in advance, and it has a yellow form. But it will not matter if, for your specimen, you still be able to identify the species correctly by clicking on yellow form in your case. Seems very simple. Now I go to the next best character. And it's going to say pronotal CD terebrantia. And obviously we have terebrantia here. We could see the serrated ovipositor. And I'm going to, it's pretty obvious even under this low magnification. Again, for small insects, it's very important to focus up and down. But you can see we have two major CD, posterior angular CD. Suppose we didn't know what posterior angular CD were. We could go over here to the key and click on this box next to it. And it would say, no long posterior angular CD giving us an image. Well, quite obviously, we know that these CD are long, and there's two pair of them, so we're going to put two there. Click OK, and you'll notice we've only filled out half of the the possible characters that we could add it and it also asks for number of pairs of major CD on the anterior margin. Let's click on that image and see what that shows us. And it says here uh, that there are, you can see there are major CD on the pronotum. And in our specimen it's quite obvious that on the anterior margin of the pronotum that we have, we can see one there and we can see one there. And so we're going to put two. We don't see others. All right, at this point, you'll see that we mostly have Franklin Yella species left. That's one of the very nice things about Franklin Yella is they have usually, except in the Minuta group, they have five pairs of major pronotal CD. And uh, so it was quite obvious to know this was in Franklin Yella. 
to begin with. So primarily what we have left here is Franklin Yell. I'm going to go to the next best character, which are paired Campaniform Sensili on the metanotum. Going to higher power. And focusing. Here we have the metanotum. And the suppose you didn't know what the campaniform sensili were, you could click on one, this choice that says present and you can see them here. Do we see that in our specimen? No, we don't see them. So we're going to say absent. Again, choosing the next best character, it's asking us Oceller C Oceller C D three length. And it is a little difficult to see the first two pair, but by focusing in and out, we can see them. This would be two here, and this is one here. And here's the third. This is the Ocellar triangle. Here's Ocello, Oc Ocelli one, two, and three. The Ocellar triangle here. And the choices are uh, longer than distance between posterior ocelli. Here's the posterior ocelli. And you have to be very careful because uh, you're looking at this necessarily from up and down. But it's very obvious that the length is longer than this length. This is the third ocelli. So it's quite obvious that it's longer than distance between posterior ocelli. We're going to we're going to choose that, and you'll see we're down to three Franklin yellow, and we're going to click on next best character, and it says ocellar CD three position clearly within the ocellar triangle. Well, this that's about as obvious as anything could be. There's the ocelli, the basis of the third ocelli, and here's the ocellar triangle. And so we're going to choose that. Franklin Yella Schultzii. We have an identification. Again, one of the very nice features of this Lucid Key is we can now go over, which is what I always do if I'm unfamiliar with a species, and click Browse Species. We've chosen Franklin Yellow Schulzii, so let's click on F and go down and find this page for Franklin Yellow Schulzii. And click on that, and we'll see the additional information on this page about Franklin Yellow Schulzii. And it has distinguishing features. It also has some, you know, our keys are made for, male, for females, but there's also information about males. 
should you have had a, a male species, or a male uh, specimen, and you can see that it says the male smaller than female, tergite eight with a few teeth laterally, uh, sternites three through seven with broadly transverse pore plate. Under variation, there's some very significant information about this species. It says that Franklin Yellow Schultz CI is not only variable within and between populations, it also exists as a yellow and a brown form that are more or less distinct. The yellow form is possibly even a distinct species to which name Franklin Yellow Sulfuria applies. There's information here on related and similar species. Taxonomic data, Schultzii is the current name, original name and synonyms. Family placement, it's a thripity. Common names, tomato thrips. Uh, breeds and flowers, recorded from a very wide range of plant species. Tospo virus is vectored, tomato spotted wilt virus, tomato chlorotic spot virus, and groundnut ring spot virus. And you'll see distribution data, a area of origin South America or Africa, distribution pan-tropical. That's it. I don't say my name or anything. In this video, we're going to use the thrips of California, the lucid key and the thrips of California to identify a thrips. And we've clicked on identify thrips. Uh, and this is the, the page that we're on. Using this key, you'll see there's uh, features available and then features chosen. And in this, uh, in this box, we have all of the various species of thrips that are included in this lucid key. And the entities discarded, which I'll show in a moment, this will be the ones that we've decided we've chosen characters, and those are the, the species that have been eliminated. There's various ways to use this key. I'm going to use what's generally considered the best, the, the best way pretty much through. Uh, but you can choose any character you want to of the uh, features that are included. Uh, here I'm going to go, well, it, it, it already has up the very first character, which is the abdominal segment 10. So I'm going to click on abdominal segment 10. And I think we know enough about the morphology of thrips to be able to recognize which character to choose here. But uh, this is not tubular, but conical and female and longitudinally, longitudinally divided ventrally. So we simply We'll click on that. We will choose that. And you see when I do that, that it has in the entities discarded box, 
that it has discarded uh, 69 entities and we have remaining 173 species. So again, I'm going to proceed with uh, this, this next best character. I'm going to choose that. And it has gone to the metanotum. Metanol median CD. So at this point, I'm going to move my specimen to the metanotum. focus that and I can see the character but I'm going to go to higher power and I focused on that so Here we have the metanotum, and you can see what are the metanotal median seed. And the character is saying that these are arising on either the anterior margin, arising behind the anterior margin, or arising near the posterior margin. And here would be the posterior margin and here's the anterior margin. And just in case you weren't sure of what you were looking at, I'm going to go over here and click in the key on an image. And it's saying arising behind the anterior margin. And that's what this looks like to me. So let's click on that. And you'll see we generate an image that indeed looks like our actual specimen. So if you're unsure of that character, you can, you can uh, one of the nice things about this key is for most of the features, there is a, uh, uh, an illustrated image to see that. But it's very obvious that it arises behind the anterior margin and so I've chosen that. Now we have 168 species that have been discarded. And we have remaining 74 species that have those two characters that we've chosen so far. Next I'll again go to the next best character. And I'm going to move the image so we all can see it. And you could see where it asks for the number of pairs of major posterior angular CD. Uh, there's quite clearly two. One here and one here. And so I'm going to enter that value of two. And we don't necessarily have to enter this other value, I don't think, but uh, it asks for the number of pairs of major CD on the anterior margin. And so looking at the anterior margin, I'm not seeing any major CD there. 
So I'm going to put a value of 0 there. Now we have 35 species remaining in the key. I'm going over to choose the next best character to identify. And it's asking body color. I think it's quite obvious that uh, it's uniformly brown. Of course, one has to be very careful with material that has been soaked in, uh, and, and cleared, but this one is quite obviously uniformly brown. I might also point out, since I know what this species is in advance, that this particular species has a yellow form. It should not matter in the key if your particular specimen is almost uniformly yellow. If you happen to choose that, it should not discard the species. So now I'm going to the next best character again. We're down to 22 species. And it's asking for vein CD length. In fact, it's asking for the median, the medially, the vein cedal length medially. And that's a little bit difficult to see at this magnification, but I think we can see it clearly enough. And focusing up and down. It's pretty obvious that uh, if we were to choose one, we would say between 0.3 and 0.5 of wing width medially. Based on experience, sometimes you get a little confused. Um, and if you're not sure, in this case, if you would say, well, that looks a little bit more than half to me, you could go on to the next best character you see. You can click on that and choose the next best, but it seems clear enough, don't you think? So I'm going to choose that. We're down to nine species at this point. And by the way, this wing looks like it might actually be upside down by the way it's mounted. Sometimes we don't have perfect specimens to work with, but it's still, we can see the characters well enough. The next best character now is paired campaniform sensilla. So I know those of you that are not thrip specialists, you probably have no idea what that is. But we're talking about the metanodal or the uh, on the metanodum, and it's paired campaniform sensilla. You'll see in the key is we're talking about the metanodum. So I'm going to get our specimen and try to get in focus the metanotum. I know. There it is. Looks like it's in focus. Now, I'm going to go back over to the key, and I'm going to click on the image of, let's say present, because I don't know what those are. And you'll see that 
these are little pore-like structures, actually mechanoreceptors, but they're in the metanotum, and that's where they're present. We can also click click on the image where they are absent and you can see in this case that we don't see them so we seem to have our our specimen our own specimen in focus here and it's quite clear that they're not present so we're going to choose absent We're down to four species. The next character, next best character is discal seedy. We're talking about the abdomen. You'll see this is under the abdomen. So it's abdominal discal seedy, and we're talking about sternites three through six. And I think I needed to lower my magnification so we could see this. A little difficult to focus in and out on that, but those are the sternites here. And you can see that uh, even at this lower magnification, we don't see any CD discal CD. Uh, there are some marginal CD on the sternites. So I'm going to say absent. And we're down to two species. So now I go to the next best character and it says microtrichia presence on lateral thirds of tergites four through six. Very fortunately, we're already in that area. We will need to increase the magnification to see that. And when I do that, you can see this is a tergite. And here we are on the lateral thirds of the tergite, and you can see these, right, these rows of microtrichia very clearly. Thrips tabassi remaining. Another feature that what I usually do when I'm identifying a species, which there's another feature in this key which is extremely useful, and you'll see I go over here and it says browse species. And I'm going to click on that because what I want to do is going to browse species and then we we had thrips to bassi so I'll click on the T carry us down here to this uh, all of the species in the key and I'm going to click directly on thrips to bassi and there's a page here of information about thrips to bassi with a lot of very useful information let's say that you were unsure of your identification for one thing and you want to verify. There's, so there will be more information. It'll have uh, additional comments about distinguishing features. 
it'll have comments about uh, ways to identify the male, what the males look like, about variation. And for example, if we look at variation, it says adult females vary greatly in size and color from small and yellow to large and dark brown. It also will give you information about related and similar species. And one, you'll notice one of the things that it says in there, it says that Thripstabassi is unusual within the genus and lacking red pigment around the ocelli and is usually easily recognized by the closely spaced rows of ciliate microtrichia on the plural turgites. So we happen to be in that area. So let's look at the plural turgites. Focus up and down, and there you go. Regular rows of microtrichia. And if we want to click on, there are also are images on the uh, individual species pages. So if we still run sure of what we were looking at, you'll notice there's an image of the abdominal pleural turgites. So we can click on that, and here you see these rows of microtrichia on the pleural turgite. And you can also see those microtrichia in this image on the lateral thirds of the turgites, abdominal turgites here. You'll also see quite a bit of uh, important information on this page about taxonomic data, its current valid names, synonyms, family placement, common names. In this case, you'll see this thrips is often call, called the onion thrips. There's also some uh, biological information, host plants. Uh, you'll also see here that this species is a confirmed vector of tomato spotted wilt virus, which is one of the species of of, of TOSPO viruses, uh, some information about crop damage, uh, distribution you'll see here that its area of origin is the eastern Mediterranean and its distribution is cosmopolitan, except for the wet tropics. That's it. I think I'm going to do another species. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. One more He's to do. One more species to go. So we need to stop. Record, right? Yes. Okay. I think that came out fabulously. Mm -hmm. Did all y'all see the microtrichia on the lateral 